Brad Johnson's been good enough to join us, one of Fox Footy's finest and one of the Bulldogs' all-time greats. You can catch Jono and the whole Fox Footy team for the longest kick and pre, halftime and post grand final coverage on Channel 504 on Foxtel on Saturday night. In fact, it starts Saturday and it goes right through Saturday night until deep into the night after the night grand final. And Jono's been good enough to join us. Well, dear Jono, great to have you back on the program. G'day, Dwayne. Great to chat to you, mate. So, how excited are you? <laughs> I'm pretty excited, mate. As you as you could imagine, <laughs> it doesn't take too much to sort of get me up and about, Dwayne. So I'm certainly, um, yeah, pretty uh, pretty excited about this weekend's game, of course. And look, it's just a it's just a good build up. Now we got through we got through last week. Last night was uh, an unbelievable Brownlow counter. Now we're we're ready to go. So it's. It's good. I'm actually, um, I suppose, overall quite calm. I suppose being through the, the nerves and excitement of 2016 and, and the club, you know, overcoming that long gap of, uh, of not winning a flag makes this one, I suppose, more mentally a, a little bit easier to, um, to build up towards. So in 15 years' time, when someone runs into you on the street, Jono, and you have to explain to them what, what went right this year when you win the flag, I know you've got to win another game, but what, what's gone? Why? <laughs> Why is why have the Bulldogs had such a good year, and why are they such a, a great team to watch and play this kind of footy that allows them to win games that a few people don't think they're going to win? Oh, look, I think the flexible on the run, I think, is is one way to to um, to describe the dogs in terms of what they've been able to do with their style throughout the year. It has changed a couple of times. It's a different sort of style they're they're playing now, and and they're kicking it a lot more rather than you know handballing it around out of out of congestion, especially in this final. So I think that's been a pleasing bit. And look, we've got the best player in the country that plays for the plays for the Bulldogs in Marcus Bond and Pelly. Now I know he was beaten last night by Ollie Wines, but but overall the way that um, you know he he galvanises this group and the way that he plays and wins wins games off his own boot. I think that's that's a fair reason why the the dogs have gone well and they've got some younger players that have improved. Dwayne, honestly, that's the way that and you look at Melbourne in the in the same boat. They've they've got guys that are that might have been out of the best 22 last year that have all of a sudden, all of a sudden found their way in that has allowed them to, um, to help bridge the gap in performance. And that's the Bulldogs have got four or five of those as well. So it's, um, it's, I always go back to the bump though, because he's the main reason I think why the dogs are in this position. How much is it due to getting your first picks in the draft right? Because it seems as if you keep getting them right. Uh, Norton, yeah, tick. Um, Bonapelli, tick. Um, Bailey Smith, tick. Uh, um, Tim English, tick. So getting mm. those picks right has been a crucial part of it. Do you think? Oh, look, that's and that exactly right. And and that's from a from a Bulldogs point of view in terms of what will keep them in good stead for the next three to five years as well. You'd think with with the Jamari Ugal Hagen last year, they they could get Darcy this year, and all of a sudden they get just continue to build in terms of those first and second picks that have been very successful for, for the footy club over that period of time you just mentioned. And it will can and it will continue. It was last year. It will continue in, into this year's draft as, as well and probably beyond. So there's that aspect that um, also, Dwayne, yeah, I totally agree with, with, those, with the way you've described that, the aspect around their drafting and, and the successful nature of it as well. So how much is it due to coaching? And I ask you this question knowing that your best mate... Rowan Smith is part of the coaching team. So it seems as if they are able to get the best out of these players because we know that just because you're a top 20 draft pick doesn't guarantee you having a good career. And, and it seems as if Luke Beveridge, the coaching staff, the development system is working. Definitely. Uh, and, and look, the coaches have been, been great. I think Bevo um, certainly you know, leads that charge really well in terms of the the way that he um, allows the, the coaches a little bit of freedom, I think, in terms of the way that they go about it. He's certainly open, really open to the coaches, you know, bringing everything to the, to the table to, to produce the best football for the, for the areas they control, but also the individuals within those areas. And look, yeah, Smitty does a great job down, down back, no question, the way that he's been able to... This, this back six is where everyone's looked to, as in terms of the pressure, where the pressure will come. And even against Port Adelaide in the... Um, uh, last weekend, it was the back six that everyone thought with no Keith they'd be exposed, and they're able to get the um, get the job done. I think he's done a, a mighty job in terms of those sort of things, and 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 even the the change in personnel down there. You know, getting uh, a Bailey Dale back from a forward mid to to become an All Australian half back, I think's been a a real credit. And then you 
You look at you know the the resurrection of a, a Taylor Jaray, for example. Eastern Woods back playing his his very best footy that we saw in in 2016. So there's that aspect, and it's the down backs the kicking game, and that's where Smitty was an unbelievable kick and probably yep. the best kick that I ever played with. And you look at the the type of players that he's he's got around in that area. You got you know Williams and and Jaray's a good kick. You got Dale, Dale of course, and, and Daniel. So they're, they're elite users of the ball in that half of the ground. Does Rowan want to be a senior coach in time? I haven't really spoken to him too much about that, Dwayne, to be honest. I think with the, the element of what he's achieved in his coaching career so far has been, has been very good. It's been excellent. In fact, you know, going and being, being a part of the premiership and the defensive coach in, in 2016 and, and then having to rebuild things throughout the last few years and getting to that point, he's, he's certainly a top-level coach. But as Stephen King's in that position as well as the senior assistant down at the Dogs, does a great job, and Ash Hansen, is always improving in that forward aspect of his coaching as well. So I think they're really happy with the, the cross-section of coaches that they've got. And look, I think deep down, Boy Smitty's in his, in his late 40s now. So he'd be the perfect coach for a club that needs that, stabi- that stability, that, that needs to love their footy again, that, that um, want to put a smile and love for the game because he's always passionate about that, that, uh, that side of things. Bevo's a little bit different. Um, talk me through Luke Beveridge because he's the kind of guy that, you know, I've had, you know, 51 minute conversations with him. I mean, I don't really know the guy. I only know what I see, and sometimes it's hard to ascertain what's behind what you see. You look, Dwayne, I'm similar in some ways. I played with Bevo at the start, and um, he, was, he was a great teammate, to be honest with you. And I know it was only 12 months, but you get so much from, and you understand the direction that these guys are going to go in post footy. And he was always that educator back then for us young guys stepping into the, into the fold of football. And it's no question he gets the best out of young guys now with uh, the way that he, he coaches. I, I think, he, I think the, the main aspect that, that we, we understand, and, and you're right, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, is talking to him on, on a minimal basis, on a, a regular basis, I suppose, before matches and, and things like that. But he, the thing you take from it is the, the fact that he's, he's just passionate about his, his playing group. You can tell that he, he protects his playing group really well. And they're the, they're the main assets that you need to have, I think, as as the coach, apart from the, the tactical nows that, that you need, if you've, got the, if you've got that love for the players that grows over years, because you've got Luke Beveridge that coached the Premiership in 2016 and then didn't play finals for a few years and then had to try and get the club back into a top four position, he could have lost the players at any point post that, but he hasn't done that. And that's, I think, the, the key to longevity in, in your coaching is when you're going through some downturns after a real positive aspect to, to your coaching life, how you can rebound from that. And that's what he's been able to do now. And the spirit of the club, you I mean, as a leader of the club, as their greatest games player, you were part of the building of, uh, a, I hate calling it a brand, but I mean, the Bulldogs had this downtrodden against all odds kind of persona where, you know, the, the perception of the dogs was it was always going to be really tough for them to ever get to the top rung on the ladder. But they'd fight their way and fight, fight, fight is the, you know, the way that you used to go about it. But it seems as if that's changed a bit. The fight is still there, but there's a belief that this could be actually a top-line team that uh, you know, is a big fish in the sea for a while. Yeah, definitely. And that, that was the challenge for, for all those years that the Bulldogs growing up barricades for them, watching them you know, nearly 89 and nearly, nearly going under and then being a part of 96 and changing the name to the Bulldogs and the new board coming in with small go to take the direction forward because we're in trouble then. And we're in trouble another time where we had to take 15% pay cuts as players and staff because of, the club was in a, in a really tough position. Even though we played some prelims during that time and had some final series as well, we just didn't have that ability to, um, to take that final step. And look, the club always sat around, you know, that 25 to 35 sort of thousand members. And then... 2016 was the it was the best thing for the for the position of the club now to what you were just talking about before Dwayne in terms of the fact that 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 premiership got complete completely got rid of the debt it, it allowed the club to to become really strong now within the football world and and here forever not chasing you know repaying repaying debt or loans and all those things that the club had to do for a long period of time 26 changed the full direction of the footy club so Therefore, it's put, put them in a really strong spot in terms of the types of um, members that, that the club do have. It's not so much on the amount, it's the, it's the type that they have, the merchandise that's been sold, the type of players now they can build the club around. 
like the Bonds and like McRae that we've um, that the club certainly got. So there's all those elements post 2016 that have put the club into this position now for really strong uh, strong position into the future, regardless of results and regardless of you know winning premierships and all those sort of things that that go with um, you know the year in year out of the season. So the tough question is, what are you going to do with selection this week? Keith and Waitman, I believe, obviously have to come in. What are you, what are you going to do at selection? Oh, it's always tough. It, it really is, and you know the stories of unlucky players that that miss out. So you, it, you, you generally, generally look towards, I suppose, the the back line and the talk around. If Keith comes back in, do they go with the three three tools down back? Maybe they have to against Melbourne and the um, the fact they can play Jackson and they can play big Benny Brown and also McDonald in that part of the ground. They maybe need that third tool unless they go with East. If they go with Eastern Wood, it may mean that Gardner uh, or Cordy may have to um, step out of the team, and Waitman has to come in up forward. So you go Vandermeer was sore, but it looks like he'll, he'll get through. Scott was the sub last week, came on, had an impact in the time that he was on the ground, but maybe the unfortunate one. So it's it's just tough, but unfortunately those those couple of players are, are going to have to make their make way for you know Keith and Waitman to come back into the side because they're critical in the in the Bulldogs best 22. Sounds like you're leaning towards the thought that they should keep Zane Cordy in. Yeah well, I'm, I'm, I am I, I like the way Zane plays his footy he had a very good year and then stepped out of the team and um, struggled to find his way back in but last week he showed that he can step in and, and play a really important role for for the Bulldogs so I think with the way Melbourne can set up forward of the ball, maybe he, he does have the matchup required. And like I said, it, that comes down to the, the Eastern Wood discussion because he can play tall Eastern. So it's, it's what they do um, in regards to, um, to his position, Eastern, and, and his matchup first to then determine what, um, what they do with the, with the possible three talls of, of Melbourne and whether the dogs keep three talls, tall defenders in the team. So, and sub-wise, could Cordy be a sub or is that more likely to be a, well, a Vandermeer type or a Rourke Smith? Who well, needs to be in the 23 he, even if he's not the 22? Well, that's right. But he, he played forward in the 2016. Yeah. So he's got that flexibility in his game that he can play both ends of the, both ends of the ground. It's, a, it's another great discussion because whether your sub is that taller player who can play either end or, and maybe they need that because if Keith goes down early, as a, and his hamstring doesn't hold up if they play him, then all of a sudden they've got the perfect replacement sitting on the bench. So there's all these things that have to come into it. You're exactly right. He can play forward as well. And it's, it's that option of a taller player who might be able to cover, cover Keith if he goes down or they, they go with speed at ground level. And you won't be there, Jono. <laughs> It'd be nice to be over there, but... No, I'll be I'll be in the office, mate, at uh, at Fox Footy. So looking forward to to that. It's a, it's going to be a huge build up. Uh, the longest kick will kick things off, which will be which will be a bit of fun. And then and then from there, we'll we'll certainly rotate through. And I'll be there for the for the entirety of the game, which will be which will be good. So my 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 wife Donna, her 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 whole side of the family are all Melbourne. So mad, passionate Melbourne. So I understand the nerves they're going through at the moment. It's probably a good thing. I. I won't be I won't be around because we we might butt heads. So uh, it'll be good to just be in the office and, and watch the game. And record sales uh, for Ella's single on the bond would have gone up last night had he just won that Brownlow. Oh, uh, if he had a, if he had a claim victory, it might have got a fair run today. <laughs> so it's still going. It's still going all right. It's ticking away in the in the background. That's um, it's doing pretty well. So if you want a good footy song, jump on on the bond on Spotify. It's a it's a good, fun song. Hopefully, it'll make you smile. Yeah, you can Google Ella J. Um, yeah, longest kick. It's going to be huge on Fox. Uh, got to ask you about the Carlton coaching job as well. Do you think Michael Voss is going to get it? I think I think Michael would be a, a fantastic coach. I, he's got that presence about him, but I think he would have learned a lot from when he first coached to now being an assistant again at, um, at Port Adelaide and, and stepping back in. I, I think he would be... I think he'd be an excellent choice as as a senior coach. Um, I think he'd be able to bring some good people with him to support him as well. So, so therefore, I think it's a it'd be. I don't think you can question if they if the Blues did go down that track and and select Michael Voss as their as their next senior coach. 
Yeah, it's uh, going to be a watch the space because uh, obviously he's coming over here for another interview. Great to have you, John. I really appreciate your time. We'll, I'll catch you in at headquarters at some stage. No worries, Dwayne. Enjoy the week. Brett Johnson from Fox Footy. You can catch the whole Fox Footy team for the longest kick pre half time, post grand final coverage on Channel 504 on Foxtel. Starts Saturday and goes right through Saturday night. Take a break. Read out a heap of your texts as well. In fact, I read a heap of them. Um, at the moment, um, that bloke was 100% right. This is in relation to the Giants doing the right thing by trading Jeremy Cameron. Uh, that bloke's 100% right in getting rid of Cameron and picking up high-end draft picks is the way to go. The Suns are closer to a flag than the Cats, and I've got a paddle of beer on it with a mate of mine. That's a Cats fan. That's uh, Marty from Noosa. Thanks for that text, Marty. Um, uh, g'day, Dwayne Carlton fan. Great Get with Cook coming. Walsh sensational with 30 votes um, after we won just eight games. He's a star. And I do think Vossi has some presence, which I think we need uh, if Clarko won't do it. Paul and Warrigal. So quite a few Carlton fans quite happy if Michael Voss ends up being their coach and it doesn't end up being Alistair Clarkson.